it's been a tough year for the chips sector, but we did get some nice earnings last night from Lattice Semiconductor uh, and NXP. You think the worst is over? Sure. So, uh, first of all, good morning. But, you know, I would say in general, you know, we remain constructive on the semiconductor industry over the longer term. Really, the secular content growth is going to drive, on average, pretty solid growth over time. Uh, obviously, the, the sector remains somewhat cyclical. Um, and uh, But really, what we're looking at right now, you know, despite some bright spots, we are very much... Uh, uh, in, of the belief that you know we're in a sort of an inevitable inventory correction uh, that really follows two years of robust revenue growth, exacerbated by acute supply chain uh, constraints, and, and really that led to unprecedented uh, customer co-investments as well as pockets of uh, double ordering. And, and really, we anticipated 2023 to be kind of a challenging year with a modest, uh, moderate uh, sort of downturn. Um, I think it's, it's come earlier and it's been a bit more abrupt. What are you expecting from AMD tonight and how do you expect the company to address the export ban uh, announced by the Commerce Department on October 7th? Yeah, so just in terms of how they're, they're going to manage it, uh, you know, I mean, obviously one of the concerns about the export bans is that uh, it does sort of remove a, a, a portion of the addressable market uh, for companies like AMD and NVIDIA, as well as some of the chip equipment makers. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see a couple of things. Number one, obviously, there's the, as the aspect of enforcement, um, you know, given the fact that there are provisions for granting licenses that uh, provide exceptions. Also, there is the consideration for sort of uh, China's retaliation to the extent that they do so and how they do so. Um, you know, but but ultimately, this does actually take off the table. Like we believe, uh, you know, some, some structural demand uh, for companies like AMD. Um, it uh, does also, of course, provide some longer-term opportunities as well. But uh, you know, that is that is sort of undeniable that uh, it is meant to sort of take mm. that demand off the table. Yeah, Jason, as you examine the balance sheets of these companies and look at the, the, the benefits and risks, uh, what would you say is the best name to own in the broader semiconductor space? Oh, well, you know, we're, we're on the debt side, so sort of not really in the, in, in the, in the business of providing investment advice. But, you know, what, what I would say is from a credit perspective, uh, we're, we would generally say that uh, most semiconductor names have benefited from a credit profile standpoint greatly from the essentially robust growth that we've seen over the last couple of years, position themselves well, manage their balance sheets, and so have a little bit of headroom for what, again, we, we expect to be some cha challenging 2000.